Peanut Bell car. Now, you know, I've always been a fan of the Mazda Zoom Zoom, but does that kind of sensibility carry over to this behemoth, the 4,500-pound 2014 Mazda CX-9? all-wheel drive version. Now under the hood I've got a 3.7 liter V6 which is good for 273 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque. All of that's mated to a six-speed automatic transmission. Now EPA fuel ratings are 16 in the city, 22 out on the highway and 18 combined but I have to say during my time in this car where I was driving mostly in the city with a few stints, short stints on the highway I only averaged 12.5. I mean, I just find it really hard that in today's day and age, I can't get a crossover that gets better gas mileage than that. Mazda really should know better. Inside, the Mazda CX-9 has a really nice design, albeit made with some unremarkable materials. Now, I do want to talk about this center armrest. Most of the time to access the storage compartment, it's a flip top like this, but here Mazda is giving us these uh, cellar doors. Now if I'm driving along and let's say I need to access the USB port for whatever reason, this is kind of awkward. So I feel like I would probably open the passenger side and do this, which means that my passenger is always wrestling me for access to the armrest. Of course, it's my armrest, I'm the driver, I'm the it's my car, I get access to the armrest, but it still can be a little annoying for your passenger. to make a seven passenger crossover sexy, Mazda's done a fairly decent job. The nose thrusts out fairly aggressively and this baby is rolling on 20s. Behind the wheel, the CX-9 really does behave much more like a smaller car than the 200 inch long behemoth that it is. In fact, while driving around the city, I kind of felt more like I was in the Mazda 6 with the amount of uh, ability and nimbleness that I had to kind of dart around smaller and um, uh, slower taxi cab. The V6 engine does give you plenty of power and the transmission shifts smoothly and quickly, although it's geared a little bit more for conservative driving. But you can operate the transmission manually from the stick. Now, most of the time, on a crossover like this, it's just not worth it. I mean, why bother, right? It's a crossover. But on the Mazda, you actually can have a little bit of fun in manual mode. It really allows you to hold those gears more. You can get up in those high revs and that's where the fun is, right? <laughs> you know, it doesn't uh, redline until 6,500 RPM. So there is a little bit of fun to be gotten out of the Mazda CX-9. Let's see, come on, laundry baskets. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. This takes forever. It's really slow. Come on. Nope. And that means it gets a laundry basket of laundry basket rating of zero with those seats folded up. But if I push those babies down to fold flat, I get 48.3 cubic feet of space. And a trademark laundry basket rating of four with plenty of room left over. Now, if I want to take those second row seats and fold those, I get 100.7 cubic feet of space. So that's quite a lot for this uh, segment of the standard array of features that you come to expect here in this grand touring car like heated seats, Bluetooth, cruise control, iPod connectivity, you've got a backup camera. Now one thing that I had a 
you have a problem with is this touch screen here. Yes, I've got one, but it's only 5.8 inches, so it's kind of small. I also had a little bit of trouble with the voice recognition system on the navigation, but the Sirius satellite radio, the radio presets were really easy to program, and it's got this nifty little um, song alert thing. So let's say you're listening to a station and your favorite song comes on, you can press seek alert, and the next time that some song comes on anywhere on Sirius satellite radio, you'll get a little notification, and then if you want to, you can go to that particular radio station. So that's kind of cool. But of course, my favorite feature as always is the sunroof. Holla! In the second row of seats, there is plenty of room for three full-sized adults, but I know that sometimes getting into the third row in these uh, crossovers can be a little difficult, but in this guy, ah, it's pretty easy. How much of my butt did you see? You so, did, you saw my butt. Saw I don't think I butt. saw butt, but. also looked at the Ford Flex and the Hyundai Santa Fe, but frankly, the CX-9 bests that in both sportiness and good looks. Our test model here starts at $36,625, but with the optional technology package, uh, the final price is $40,005 smackaroos. So on the TFL scale of buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, I give the 2014 Mazda CX-9 Grand Touring a... God, I really want to give it a buy it, you guys. I really, really do. But at an average, at a, a, a consumer average MPG of just 12.5, I can't do it. I want to so bad because it's so much fun, but I can't do it. I have to give it a lease it. Ah, oh, it's killing me. Honestly, in today's day and age, you have to be able to perform with MPGs as well. That's what consumers are looking for. So Mazda's really got to up their game to make sure that they and get these MPGs up where consumers expect it to be. That's it for today. I am Emmy Hall. Thank you so much for watching. Yay! Hey, you can subscribe to our channel. You can find me and TFL Car on all the social medias. And you can go to tflcar.com for more news, views, and reviews. Thanks for watching. See you soon.